Hey, mister. Hey, mister, we are at the Time Campus with Giga Meta. Thank you very much for the interview. Yep, thank you. Um, so, you're a digital entrepreneur and a video journalist. You worked for five years as a video journalist for the New York Times, and you're a co-founder of the um, collaborative storytelling platform Loopstream. Mm -hmm. um, you also make this documentary project 18 Days in Egypt, which is very exciting, and we, we're really looking forward to know a bit more about that. And yeah, that one is about the Egyptian Revolution. And first of all, could you explain us a bit about um, 18 Days in Egypt and about Groupstream? Great. So uh, almost a year ago, exactly, at the end of the Egyptian Revolution, um, when Hosni Mubarak did step down, I was kind of struck uh, by a constant image of Tahir Square of people with their cell phones held up high, kind of documenting themselves in the moment of the revolution. Yeah. So even though they were participants, they were actually also recording it and sending it out to the world. And that's how yeah. a lot of us actually experience not just the Egyptian revolution, but other big moments last year. But with Egypt, I was very interested about, you know, was it possible with all these millions of people who were out there creating media, creating their stories, to be able to weave together a, a larger narrative using the media that they had created? And so that was kind of the, the statement that we had taken, and we said, how, okay, now how do we do that? To make, so to say, to make a story out of Small parts? Yeah, parts? like media, Small. we call them media fragments. Yeah. A tweet here, a photo there, an art, a article over there, a YouTube yeah. video. These are all kind of disparate elements that are out there on the internet. Um, but when you can kind of bring them together, you know, when I can yeah. take your Facebook update with my tweet, with your YouTube video, we can actually tell a very nice story. Yeah. That, that makes, because we have to think about the way we consume social media now is like it's like a it's like a fire hose right like you're just sitting in front of it i can catch some of the water i get it if not some coming from everywhere right? everywhere yeah. yeah but we have to think about what is this going to what is all this content going to mean in 20 years in 10 years in five years you know it needs context it needs it needs to make sense and yeah. so one thing that we're really focusing on is okay now that we've created the content how do we actually bring it back together in a place that's consumable okay so um you put this content together on the website and... We don't actually pull it together. Who we, puts it together? We, we actually created... Uh, so basically, uh, going back to the thing that we wanted to actually create uh, a, a film, a documentary, a 90-minute film that would be the, the definitive film of the 18 days as told by the people. Yeah. Uh, and as we started kind of going through the process, we actually learned a lot about how people were contributing content how they were uploading content, how it was uh, having a lot of these issues yeah. of not having the context. So we decided to make our a bespoke platform for 18 days that would really um, bring people's social media together to tell stories. And in the process of bringing together the media, they're actually adding the context. Okay. So they're the ones who are, who are making the stories. We're providing them the technology to actually easily create the story. Okay, and how did you think of the idea then creating a startup? Um, how? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah no, definitely, that? yeah. And that's where Groupstream came out of was uh, through the process, uh, we were creating something that would allow people to tell their stories together. Uh, we found, actually found that something very interesting was that um, if you and I were to tell the story of our time here in Berlin at the, at the talent campus, I could tell my version and you could tell your version. But if we tell the story together, it actually, we, the truth is actually in the space between us. Yeah. That, that we can actually tell the story together in much that's more accurate. We can fact check each other. You know, there's little things we can do when we collaboratively tell something. And so we wanted to use that kind of analogy on telling stories of the Egyptian revolution. Going through the process though, you know, Libya started happening, Syria was, a, you know, they would occupy. All these other, other global mo movements yeah. were, were happening at the same time and people were saying, are you gonna do another film? And at this point we had said, okay, we're actually, we're actually going to be a web native documentary, um, and a film might come out of it, but that's not our our our, our real emphasis yeah. is on the web native. But why can't we create? We're creating something that could be used for telling stories of almost anything, and so that's where Groupstream came out of. Was okay. How do we actually collaboratively tell stories together? 
Soul Groups Day be a tool for telling yeah. stories? Yeah. Yeah, we're very excited about 18 Days is kind of our playground. We're yeah. using 18 Days to kind of experiment a lot. Um, you know, in this type of environment, it's best to, to fail fast, to, to try something. If it doesn't work, learn from it and, and then iterate yeah. on the process. So that's what we're using 18 Days for, uh, gathering tons and tons of data about how people are actually telling stories and then feeding that back into the group stream platform, which will we're hoping to release later this year that will let everyone tell their stories. And um, how would that be? Would it be like open for every story? How can normal users use it? Are you going to use group team for um, yeah. your projects? How, how, like, where are the limits? Yeah, there, there, are, there are no limits. Uh, we really are designing it in the way that the web works. The web is open, yeah. it's about connections, it's about uh, uh, endless boundaries. And so we, that, and that's why we took a lot of time in building the platform. Yeah. That you know, one thing that you see with a lot of web web projects is um, uh, I call them cul-de-sacs. I don't know if you have that here in Europe. A cul-de-sac is like it's a very suburban thing. But when you know, people live in people live in cul-de-sacs where you know you turn in and there's no way out. The only yeah, way out yeah, is to go yeah. back. You know, so it's in. It, 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 so when you're in these projects, there's no connection to other projects. Yeah, yeah. You're, they're, you're, they're working themselves. They're working themselves, and you know, if you look at something as simple as Facebook. One of the re reasons it's done so successful is that it actually broadens the environment, and so yeah. you don't feel, even though you are in your own environment, you you feel like you're part of something much larger, and so that's exactly what we're trying to do with GroupStream. So could I, for example, I make a party, mm -hmm. and I use GroupStream. I tell my all my friends tell put your own photos on it, and then we have we kind of build a story out of. Everybody view? Could I use Google? Absolutely, for that? yeah, yeah. I mean, you could use it for your personal parties. You could use it for your documentary projects. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of uh, people excited about the idea of I've created this this thing, and we'll, we'll look at filmmakers because that's kind of um, yeah. um, our topic, right? Is filmmakers go? I've made this film. I spent you know a lot of time working on this thing, and I want as many people to interact with it as possible. One thing that we've noticed now is that the audience is not just an audience. They, the, 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 if you if you can view your audience as participants, yeah, that is that's the way to think because by bringing someone into the storytelling experience, they actually will go out and promote you, and they will be you know yeah. a promoter net promoters for you, and so they'll actually bring more audience in. But the way to do that is to make them feel like they are a part of your story, and so one way to do that is you know you know we, we're we're trying it with group stream saying you know what here is here's our story, what's your story? And, and connect your story to my story. And GroupStream, is this a non-profit project? Or how are you going to make money out of it? Yeah, no, I mean, this this is, uh, so 18 Days in Egypt is a not-for-profit. Uh, it's, it's uh, we've been generously funded by uh, the Ford Foundation and Tribeca yeah, with support yeah. from Sundance as well. Uh, and GroupStream is really, we're, we're really looking at that as a, it's a for-profit entity. That's, that's the, we want to make a tool that is available to storytellers everywhere. Okay, so um, they have to buy, it, buy a license, license for that? We haven't um, decided, decided yet, yet if, if we want to do um, a free model or okay. a subscriber model. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're still figuring out it. And yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, so um, that sounds very interesting. We prepared some questions for you about cross media in general, about your work, your opinion, and um, oh, no. here they are. A <laughs> <And>, chance. <laughs> um, the white ones are kind of nice, easy questions. The okay. right ones are provocative, difficult okay. questions. Okay. So, uh, um, yeah, you choose as many as you want, okay. choose what you want. Okay, good. Yeah. This is, I like this, this is exciting. This, <laughs> this is truly interactive. Yeah. Okay. So, question number one. Um, when and why do people want to participate? Is participation an inherently good thing? People want to participate when they're asked. Yeah. Uh, when they see themselves in it, uh, when they see their contributions as part of a larger whole, as if they're building something. Um, I think participation is inherently good uh, with the right type of uh, outlook, right? Like that, that, that if, in the right circumstances. I think it's really important that people identify themselves as they participate. Yeah. Um, it, let's taking on aside like um, 
dangerous situations where anonymity is probably a better way to contribute and participate. But in situations where, let's take something as simple as comments, yeah. Um, you know, now that more and more people are actually using comment verification to say this is who is making the comment, the, the quality of the comments rise rather than it's just anonymous, like, yeah. you know, da, da 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 So I think participation is very uh, important part of creating a community. And in, it's really interesting with the project 18 Days in Egypt, um, it, it, the, the way that people, people are in the Middle East are much more uh, content creators. Uh, uh, than consumers, so they also, they create the content and they consume it. While in the United States, it's the percentage of people that actually create content. Yeah. Uh, like the amount, of, if you take something as simple as Twitter, Facebook, the amount of people that are actually posting versus who's just watching, it's it's it skews the other way. So. Oh, okay. So you know, I think it's really interesting in these emerging markets to see that people want to participate. Yeah. Okay, that was a tough one. I'll take an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's uh, that's why cross media. That's not easy. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's not. It doesn't have a negative. Um, oh, I copy, see. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you, I, you know, this is uh, a lot of people have described where we are right now in terms of um, um, the way using the web for storytelling uh, mechanism as the same way when silent film came out and they were just discovering that they could take the camera off the tripod and go outside and film the real world. Yeah. And like, oh, and this thing called editing. Like, you know, we're, 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 you know, we're still, the web to us is still up down, you know, and text heavy. Yeah, we think it's two different things, right? Yeah. This is a phone, this is television, yep. and this is internet. Yep. This is a computer, this is television, this is, te uh, this is a cinema screen, and this is the web. Yeah, and so, you know, that's, we use, we, we're comfortable with that. And so things that we're doing right now are really kind of trying to push that and kind of say like, eh, is that work? No, okay, cool. Like, okay, let's not do it that way. Let's let's try this this way a little bit. Um, how much participation is too much participation? Yeah. Um, when when is it best to have a a, a a a voice come in and like guide the conversation versus making it an open platform? Um, you know, we're we're starting to play with that. Yeah. But I think cross media is exciting. I mean, that's why I'm I'm in it. It's um, yeah. That's why we are covering it. Yeah, as it's well. really. I mean, it, yeah. it is kind of where things are going. Um, okay. The more we go online, the more we lose our own reality. I agree with that statement. Yeah, I, I I think we are in an era of overindulgence online, um, and this is it's like it's like finding a new tool, a new, a new uh, uh, you know I. I it's like discovering something and you're just like, I want this all the time. Um, and it's because we just don't understand how the tool, we don't understand the negatives of the tool. Like we, I think we're, it's really interesting, um, uh, not that cross media you know, blends people's realities that much, but in the same way that people spend so much time online now and they have these alternate lives going on. My friend did this film called Life 2.0, which is about people yeah. in, in Second Life. And, um, you know, we're only now, you know, I'm starting to see things that academia is starting to study online behavior and how it affects the human uh, condition and psyche and, and all that kind of yeah. stuff. And so, I, I, you know, 10 years ago, like, you know, no one was saying, uh, 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 a few people were saying, you know, oh, we should be, these are the types of foods we should be, we should be eating, we shouldn't be, eat, we shouldn't be doing, you know, genetically modified and this, that and the other, and this is bad, this is good. I, I think we're, we'll see a similar, like, people are going to look back at this time and say, like, I can't believe you were doing X, you know, online, or... Yeah. Da, da, da. I think, you know, that's... We're definitely in an era where we don't understand what's going on. But do you have sometimes a feeling that, like, after a day, you ran on some emails and emails, have been on internet websites, Facebook, maybe even Twitter, that you kind of... I spent the whole day on the internet somehow, I didn't go outside. Do you have this feeling sometimes? No, yep, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, I don't know the answer. Yeah. I kind of wish there was a like. Uh, see, everyone would have every, everyone would have to do it, but there there should be like a global turn off the internet day you know, <laughs> or something like that. Just see see what it's like, or you know. Oh, what's going to happen? Or or the government will do it for us, I guess. Uh, okay, what role do did your partner, technologist Yasmin who have in eighteen days in Egypt? 
Can you tell us more about your team? So Yasmin is actually, her background is, uh, she's a technologist. Yeah. She went to ITP, which is the uh, a really awesome art school in oh, NYU yeah. that focuses on telecommunications and human interaction and yeah. this, this kind of divide between technology and uh, art. Or not the, not the divide, <laughs> sorry, the, the, um, the, the mixing of. And so, uh, in, and so a year ago, uh, uh, as the Egyptian Revolution, she's Egyptian American, um, so I said, hey, I want to do this documentary. You know, could you help build the website? Um, and kind of convinced her to come on board. And kind of through the process, we actually got more, more involved to the point where we're like, wow, we now have this company together, which is kind of a yeah. na nice natural evolution of, of how we've kind of built our team. And so the same way our technology team, uh, which uh, uh, she helps um, manage, is actually based in Cairo. And so all our, our lead tech, uh, Mohammed El Shinewi, um, and the folks at Emerge Technology um, are, are the ones who are building the website for us, building the new technology. And so, again, they got, in, they got they, like all of us, they got into the project because of passion. Passion for the Egyptian Revolution, passion for telling these stories. If we don't tell these stories, they're gonna get lost, and history will be written by somebody else. Already the textbooks in Egypt are being written, you know, yeah. and, 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 and people's history is kind of being lost, even though it's already created out there. Um, so, all of us got into this project because of the passion for telling, telling us, telling the story, making the source the storyteller, the person who was there, hearing it from them, um, and kind of throughout it all, we've kind of developed um, as a team yeah. in a very natural way. Okay. And, yeah. um, but her background is uh, a museum, uh, museum displays, and interaction, and ex uh, exhibits, and yeah. uh, working on the technology side of those. So a lot of touch. How do you know? How do a lot of design when you enter a room? How does how does the room react to you to further the story? Yeah. So it all comes back to story, 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 story. Okay. Yeah. Should we do a couple more of these? Yeah, would be great. <laughs> okay. Okay. What is the negative side to collaborative storytelling? Yeah, there's a lot, for sure. Um, Sometimes the uh, and we're we're starting to uh, play around with this is uh, when there are two authors um, whose story actually is it can can we actually tell a story together um, yeah. that you're happy with and I'm happy with or, or because is it we have to make a compromise right? we have to make a compromise yeah. yeah or is it better for uh, us to create our own stories and have them linked together and then present that to the audience so we take the same media but we tell our own versions of it. And yeah. then the audience decides. And how, yeah, and how can you focus a story if so many people tell yeah. it? Yeah. So how, so to us it's like when do you bring in the curator? Yeah. You know, if the two of us are telling a story together, do, do one of us decide who the curator is? Is it your story or my story and I'm helping you tell the story? So these are the things that we're trying to figure out, like, you know. Yeah. Um, and that, that's, that's a lot of human nature. So most of the negative things that, that come up in this project are directly related to human nature. They're not because of like technology. Okay. <laughs> okay. Which interactive documentary do you recommend? Yeah. Well, I um, um, each of them, each documentary that's done, each web native documentary that's done, kind of plays in the field, and I think um, pushes pushes the ball further of where yeah. where um, where this where we're going. Um, I, re I really like to recommend Doc Lab as a, uh, which is run by uh, uh, ITFA and yeah. is a kind of a, is a kind of a holding place that highlights all of these stories that have been done. Um, can, you, can you say again what, what does ITFA stand for? ITFA is the International Documentary Film Festival. Yeah, Film Festival. Okay, yeah. yeah, and they have a program called uh, Doc Lab, yeah. uh, uh, which is actually run by Casper Sarin. Uh, yeah, he was here yesterday at the Christmas Festival. Yeah, 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 and he's kind of like. Uh, he, he's doing a job that no one else out there is doing right now, which is actually curating all these web documentaries and um, yeah. technologies and whatnot. And there are, uh, it's that, that, so I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to not pick one, but uh, I think each of them does something to advance the field. Okay, and so yeah. it's really exciting to see, uh, you know, whether it's something like Condition One, which is uh, an iPad app that, that lets you, puts you into a, into a scene where you are controlling where the camera goes, 
to something like Bear 71, which is done by the NFB, which you know tries to uh, uh, bring you into the storytelling of what it's like to be a grizzly bear in Banff National Forest yeah. versus you know um, Jonathan Harris and the whale hunt of, of uh, you know going out on a whale hunt um, and kind of the, in the, the emotional response of the heart rate relating to how many photos are being. I mean, each of these does or have a different kind of way of folk, you know, like pushing the industry a little forward in a different way. Okay. And then of course 18 Days in Egypt I think is by far the best, the best online documentary out there. <laughs> okay, this is a long one. Okay. Do you think interactivity gives the user more control, more power? Or is it, it or is this control an illusion? as the makers of the interactive program limit and pan uh, the power of the user? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, there are definitely times when it feels like illusion. It's like a, a choose your own adventure, but you only have two choices. Yeah. Um, you know, we're really trying to, to be more on the other side, and that's why it's, um, um, we will, some, at, at a certain point, we will actually do uh, a, a, a single experience that will be something that will take uh, stock of everything that we are collecting in this, in this documentary and, and make it an experience that will be, you know, the 15, 20 minute experience that most people want to have. Yes. Um, but what we really are saying is, you know, the users are, the participants are, are the users right now. They are contributing their stories and they're consuming the stories because it's, it's, it's people's history. And if you look on other um, documentaries, yeah. like, um, there, there aren't there many, like, aren't there many, which, as you said, it's a kind of you have some choices, but they, everything was planned, yep. which the user doesn't realize actually in most cases. Yeah, but uh, to me, that's that, that's that's very much just the way a film is planned, right? Yeah. That that, exactly. that you're entering this experience because someone has created the experience for you. It's their vision. It's they want to take you on this journey. You know, yeah. in a lot of ways, when a, a, a documentary producer or director makes decisions in their film where they withhold information from you, that's actually interact. That's interactive in your head. You're <laughs> going, "What well, is this character doing this or is he doing that?" And so, in that same way, uh, online, you know, when they present you just a few choices, but it goes to the same ending. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's okay. Again, that's, that's the author's experience. They want to take you on this journey and give you some choice. Yeah. Well, what we're doing is kind of saying like, it's completely open. And let, what happens when you completely open it in that way? Okay, um, maybe another question. Okay, Okay, uh, talking about 18 days, how will you judge the success of the platform? Is it going to go out of date soon? <laughs> That's great. So 18 days has really um, turned into a metaphor. So when, when, when you're in Egypt and you say 18 days, um, it doesn't mean just those 18 days. I mean, something really transformative happened in Egypt yeah. during those 18 days. Uh, and you know, even look, it's one year, one year later, and things, there's been a whole year of, of kind of really transformative history that's, that's taken place. So our project is not just about those 18 days, it's about everything that's happened since January 25th, 2011. And it's a project that keeps going on. So there's stories being produced today, there'll be stories produced next week. It's a, it's a way to continue the storytelling. So in that way, the story doesn't end. Okay. Yeah. But sorry, I didn't read the first part of the question again. Oh, the success of the platform. I mean, to me, the success of the platform is, is really twofold. One is that, that we get users to actually contribute stories. Um, that actually, they, they go like, this is a part of our history, and that's why it's important for me to share my story. The second thing I want that, to me, is success, and it's, it's hard to measure. I mean, we could, we could say, okay, let's get X number of views, but to me, that's not exciting. Yeah. To me, it's like, how, does, how do people see the platform? If they come to the platform, they go like, this is a place for discovery, this is a place for me to say, I know the big story. I know that something happened in Egypt, and I know uh, the people rose up and threw out one of the governments, 
and uh, they clashed on the street, they protested. But you know what? I now know the story of Muhammad or yeah. Sarah or I know these individual stories. If, if they can name one, to me that's a success because they would be able to personalize a really big story. You wrote something in an article um, about the power of um, independent media, that all these um, creativity of um, these stories cannot be part of like, um, like main media, where they, they you don't have so much power. You said you didn't kind of stop being a video journalist, or you didn't want to be a video journalist anymore, you wanted to do something new. Yeah, I really wanted to, I mean, th these tools are really exciting because it makes all of us storytellers. We all have the ability to share our story. And I felt like, especially with the, you know, you look at something like the Egyptian Revolution, was that certain stories were amplified in the media. You know, we heard, we heard the story of, of, you know, X person or Y person, uh, but there were, uh, you know, Egypt is a country of 8 million, 80 million people. They each all had a connection to that story. Yeah. So why not have a place where they can, they can if they want to, share that story? Uh, I mean, of course, there are, are you know, there are outreach questions. There, are, how do you get those stories up there? Internet penetration isn't great. We can work on that. We can work on getting uh, representative stories. But even to even have a place where people, uh, where you're not saying we only have we only have room for six stories. We have room for as many stories as yeah. people want to tell, and that's amazing. Um, I would like to know about your work as a video journalist. Um, you worked for the New York Times for like, about five years as a video journalist. Mm -hmm. What does it actually mean to be a video journalist? Like, what does a video journalist do? And how yeah. is it to be a video journalist for a newspaper or yeah. a website? Yeah. When I, when I first started, um, so the New York Times decided to say, hey, you know what, we need to, we need to start creating a, an online video unit, an in-house video unit that, that works with our reporters to create content, video content. Um, for a variety of reasons, you know, uh, one they wanted to, to expand into that space. Uh, secondly, it you know, video online does actually does really well yeah. ads, uh, which is why everyone's in video now. It's it's at the highest CPMs that more than anything, right? Um, so when I first started, it was really about how do you take this these print stories and, and transform them into 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 television. And we were really, to be honest, doing television on the web. We weren't really doing interactive. We weren't, we weren't doing web-native yeah. video content. We were producing TV content and put it on the website, yeah. which is fine. And it worked. It does work to this day. Like it's, people still, you know, now we see more and more TVs are connected to, to the internet. So people are watching web shows but on their TV. Um, but through the process, you know, we started actually developing our own voice, so it wasn't like X person writes article and I produce a video that's a component that's, that, that mirrors the story. That was how it started. Then I started going, okay, I would take a story and I would take a character in the story that was maybe one, one sentence and I would make them their own video. And so yeah. it, was, it was really complimentary the, okay. the experience. Uh, I mean, video does something that, that it's hard to do in print, right? Like by doing it, it when, you, when you see someone on video and you hear them talk, you can call bullshit on them. You can be like, I can, this person's telling the truth or no, they're not. We're, humans are very good about being able to read each other. Um, and that, there's power in video that, that you, get that, you get that across. Um, and now more and more, it's, it's uh, uh, as we're kind of the, the web is growing up, we're starting to learn how to actually use the video online to make it a much more interactive experience. And so I think, this is why I think like almost every newspaper now is turning into a new site as opposed yeah. to a newspaper. Um, okay, maybe we can finish with the last question, like yeah. one of the you never know what it is questions. One of these? Oh, no, you can show this. Oh. the right one, whichever. Cool. This is very interactive, I like <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad you Oh, no, we answered that. <laughs> okay. Social media is, a, is an illusion. It's destroying our communication. It's an illusion that we talk to people via Facebook or Twitter. We become more isolated. What do you think about that? Uh, I disagree. Uh, this goes back to my earlier point where I think the tools are so new that think about when Facebook and Twitter came out like three, four, four or five years ago, right? Yeah. It was all people posting. Like when, think about when you first logged on to Twitter. 
Um, what, what was your first tweet? I think I don't know if Twitter. Um, oh, I'm not on Twitter. I'm only on Facebook. Okay. I I'm not, I don't remember Facebook at that time had this tweeting. Yeah, thing. but yeah, it had. It's, uh, what, what are you doing? You know. I think just yeah. And people were like, oh, I'm eating this. I'm gonna go to class. People, we just didn't know how to use the tool. But now yeah. you think about how we use it now. It is like it is kind of professional. But very <laughs> yeah. It's very like you know. It's 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 about like. I want to get this message out. You know, right now I'm, I'm, we're raising funds for, for 18 days and I'm able to use these tools to, to really reach people yeah. directly and say like, you know, hey, I think, I think this is an important story to you. And I, and I link a couple of other things and I say, okay, well, can you donate money? And by me putting that into their stream, it's getting sent out to their network. And so it's not just me going like, oh, I'm in Berlin. You know, it's like I'm in Berlin talking about 18 days talking about transmit, and I'm able to make all these connections happen. So I think we've learned a little bit about how to use the tool for communication. And I mean, definitely, yes, for, for example, brands or messages. Yeah. But how is it if you communicate with friends? Um, it, is it a good tool to communicate, for example, Facebook with your mother or something? Because me and my friends, yeah. um, most of us are friends on Facebook with our parents. And yeah. obviously, when we're in a party or something, because we're friends, they always see what yeah. we write and everything, and we yeah. sometimes think like, hmm, is it actually how it should be? Yeah. Not sure about that. Yeah. As, so is it actually a good way of communicating, like writing a, a message to another person, like writing on the timeline? Or is this how we should communicate? Or what yeah, do you there's think about it? no, no, no. It's uh, it's the amount of data that we cr create about ourselves is incredible now. I mean, just yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's, it's like not that far, fa like you know, like. The digital footprint is it's going massive, and it, and, it, and it doubles every year, right? Like the amount of content we are creating about yeah. ourselves, from little things like checking in on Foursquare, by, by uh, you know, t telling people when we wake up and we sleep, and you know what we're eating. All you know, all these little things kind of add up to who we are. Um, and what can we do with all this data? Is is I think actually kind of exciting. Like we can actually use this. Uh, we can use it to kind of really tell the stories of ourselves. Um, you know, my grandchildren are going to know way more about me than I ever knew about my grandparents, yeah. which is good and bad, probably. <laughs> but, uh, you know, again, these are new tools that we, we don't really understand, to be honest. I, I don't think we understand them at all. So, but we're playing with them. Like, you know, it, it, and I think we're going to get better about how we actually use them to communicate. So, yeah, like right now, I think a lot of people, there's a great survey about... Um, but like like, eighty three percent of all the photos in the UK that are on Facebook, people are intoxicated or something. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, people are not. Uh, but maybe that's how they want to use the tool. That's, you know, the audience always is right. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Nice. Uh, nice point. And. But you should still follow us on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. We should still be Facebook friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <definitely. laughs> um, yeah, thank you very much for yeah, the video, it's really interesting and um, we're looking forward to the Cosmica uh, panel debate and have a nice time in Berlin. Yeah, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Great. <laughs>